This brings us to the final topic of this chapter, which is circular permutation. Let us take a circle around which four different objects are distributed. Now, let us look at four different versions of this figure. It might seem at the first glance that these four figures represent four different permutations, but actually these represent only one permutation. This is a tricky part in circular permutation. Let us see why this is the case. Let us compare the first two figures. Now, if I were to make a copy of the first figure and rotate it by 90 degrees, what I get is the second figure. The peculiar thing about circular permutation is that there is no start or end defined. Since all of it is a circle, I am free to view it from any angle possible. Or in other words, I am free to rotate the permutation. Any rotated version of a permutation doesn't correspond to a new permutation but refers to the same permutation. Hence, we say that both the permutation mentioned in the figure are same. We know that number of ways to arrange n different object in a row where we have a fixed start and end point is n factorial. Interestingly, number of ways to arrange n object in a circle is n minus 1 factorial. Basically, in a circular permutation, one of the object acts as a pivot and this pivot defines the start and the end position. Let us now see a formal proof of this.